I've always done genealogy for my personal family, and then when my son was murdered January 2011 and became a line of duty death for the Indianapolis Metro Police, then I started researching line of duty deaths and where the officers were laid to rest. We knew a lot about how the officers died, but after the funerals and the ceremonies, we didn't really know where they were resting. But when we went to find him at the cemeteries, the only one we couldn't find was William Nat Kemper. And we had, went back to the office and got a map, and then we came back out, and we actually spent quite a bit of time walking, and we kept coming back to the same spot. And poor William, I probably walked over him many times, but we finally, my husband and I almost at the same time looked at each other and went, his grave's unmarked. And so I actually just started a GoFundMe account, put it out to the officers if they would show interest, and then they started collecting or started donating money. And everybody realized, all the officers, I believe, realized how important it is that we remember our fallen brother. Go ahead, Max. Uh, we got together with, with Bill and uh, Terre Haute Monument Works. Uh, we came up with a, a stone and a scheme, and we put the patch on there, wanted to, something to be fitting um, that showed both the uh, old and the new and uh, to remember our brother. And the, the service today was um, just as much for our agency to let everybody know that we're very proud of our fallen heroes, um, very, very proud of our history, and bring everybody together to celebrate that. So Warden Nat Kemper and Warden William Peer, who had formerly been the sheriff in Park County, whose great niece is here, by the way, um, were on a mission to uh, put out of business people who were using contraband nets to fish with. It was not a pleasant day. The wind was howling. There were white caps on the wall bash. Um, it just was not conducive to getting out in a boat with five men. But yet, Officer Pear and uh, Game Warden Nat Kemper went out with a gentleman by the name who was a Game Warden, L.B. Watson from Greencastle, and two from Indianapolis, John Pyle and A.R. Hill. They didn't quite get to the nets when they heard some gunshots. They weren't convinced that it was just poachers, maybe somebody going after wild game or waterfowl. It could have been directed to them, and that's the way the people in Tecumseh would have played the game. They turned the boat to go back downstream to confront those who were doing the shooting when the first wave went over the bow of the boat and swamped the boat and the second wave hit and the boat capsized. William Nat Kemper and uh, Game Warden Pierre swam valiantly <laughs> and made it about 10 feet to the bank. And they both went under and <laughs> were never seen alive again. Um, Officer Watson from Greencastle uh, made it to the bank just barely and collapsed unconscious. The two other officers who made it downstream with the, the sinking boat were rescued by a fellow by the name of Burgett who had a houseboat and pulled them in at the time. Game wardens Pyle and Watson and Hill, who didn't drown, said, we will never leave. until these bodies are recovered. We will not leave the side, and they didn't. And it was days before the bodies did come up. So the commitment of these three surviving game wardens uh, to their fallen comrades to me speaks volumes about the inseparable bonds of brotherhood that existed 89 years ago, and also is the hallmark of this organization today. I think there's nothing more important than the family that supports us, because I'm an officer too, in doing our jobs. Um, and I think it's really neat that even after all these years later, that the great niece, the great nephew, the, I mean the family's here. And they know that they're a part of a bigger family, a part of the DNR family.